How's it going everyone? We're back. We're finally getting to that compression test today and the fuel pressure test at idle and under load. Um, I've already cheated and got my spark plugs out. You know how I do. Everything looked good. This front number one here was a little loose, but I doubt it's causing the this to be as down on power as people assume it is. Got our top tier tools here. Yes, sarcasm intended, but they will do the job. We're just trying to get a basic idea of what I have for cranking compression and to see if they leak down quickly or not. So without further ado, I'm gonna quit yakking, um, get this all hooked up, set this camera up on a tripod and hop to it. All right, so we're all set up. Got you pointed at the gauge. I'm gonna go ahead and crank it over. I'm doing passenger side because it's more of a pain. Um, this will be the number two cylinder right here. Nice. I don't I'll have to look at the footage later and see. But looks like it's leaking down fast. So we are off to a roaring start. <laughs> Let me see if I can, no, nope. see if I can get this any tighter. This is crazy to me though, that it would be that weak on compression. I do not have a bunch of blow by and I do not have uh, any other issues. I got great oil pressure. It delivers decent fuel mileage considering what it is. So that's kind of a head scratcher. I'm gonna go ahead and crank it again. So to me, I'm thinking this is something in the cylinder heads. Some of the valves were looking mighty pitted. I hand lapped them. I got rid of most of the pitting, but it's not very scientific. Um, it don't seem like it's coming down as fast. Looks like it's holding a little better. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera and uh, go through the rest of them and go ahead and record everything. Okay, here's cylinder number four. We're gonna get a reading. So this one's holding. I'm gonna go ahead and reset it because the gauge fell. It would be nice to have an actual set reading here. When I go back and review the footage. So yeah, 
even that one's it's holding a little over 150 Yeah, so about 160. 160. Yep, that's about 160 psi. That one's holding. It's bleeding off slow. All right, so number two is definitely one of our problem cylinders. All right, this is cylinder number six. It's the third one back in the passenger side. Going through the same process. That one looks like 160 as well, and it's holding. We'll give it a minute here, literally about a minute. And then we will, um, like I said, go to number eight. Hopefully I can get it in there. I had a hell of a time getting that one threaded in. I wish this would have worked but the threads aren't compatible. This is a Lyle brand tool I use for holding up valve springs. It's uh, threaded in, no problem. This one at Pittsburgh, not so much, but you get what you pay for, right? Okay, that one seems to be holding good too. So number two seems to be our issue so far. Let me fight with the back one and get number eight in and we'll get a reading on it. Okay, number eight cylinder furthest one back on the passenger side finally fought that in there you know the drill that one looks like a whopping 150 and we'll see if it holds Yeah, looks like it's holding, so we're going to go with that. All right, on to the next side. All right, we're on the driver's side, starting with the back cylinder over here, number seven. And, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, yep. I had to double check myself. I had second thoughts there for a minute. All right, back to doing what we do. That one's about 165. See if it holds or it leaks down. I was told by a couple people expect somewhere around as much as 210, like 195, 200 on the low side of things. So we're low all around, but that number two cylinder, as you saw earlier, just bled right off. So we've definitely got a seal issue there. I'm, I'm thinking the uh, valves aren't really seated to the, um, seats that well so all right let me go through the motions with the other three over here and we'll wrap it up okay this is going to be cylinder number five third one back Yeah, this one's also sitting at about 165, 150, 160, 160. Ah, no, actually, this one's about 170, right? No, 165, 165. And it's not leaking down like cylinder number two. Probably when I finish these other two, I'm gonna come all the way back around and retest cylinder number two. 
just to see and uh, reconfirm. We're just letting it sit here for about a minute, see if it leaks down at all. Okay, good enough for me. You know the drill. All right, this is cylinder number three, second one back on the driver's side. Here we go again. And looks like 165 as well we'll give it a minute to uh, see if it leaks down Looks like we're good. I'm gonna move on to the number one cylinder. Okay, last one. This is be number one, be the first one on the driver's side over here by the alternator. That one's holding steady. It looks like it's only 160. Which has been about average. These back two were five pounds more. And then of course I've got that one back there that was down about 10 from the rest. We'll give it about a minute here and uh, see if it leaks down. It doesn't look like it's going to though. All right, that's holding, so I guess I'm gonna go through the motions here and retest number two and see if I get the same results. I won't film that, it's kind of pointless if I see the same thing. We know what we already saw previously. And when I return, we'll wrap this all up. Okay, I had to film this because this is the weirdest thing. I'm back on cylinder number two, retesting it. It's holding 160 PSI now. Really? <laughs> I don't know what to think. I really don't. You've seen what it did on camera earlier. So, you know what? We'll take it. I have no clue what's going on with that. Maybe because it was the first one I was testing. The lifter wasn't fully pumped up yet. Is this It's been sitting here since I parked it after work yesterday around 6 p.m. I don't know. So we're going to run count that one as 160 psi that's really odd okay so before I forget leave the spark plugs out of it looking a little lean but no real signs of detonation this would be eight six four and number two a real specific uh, way of holding these here I know great there's number one from the driver's side, three, five, and seven. I don't really see anything out of the ordinary. I'm gonna look up some stuff later on uh, spark plug reading because I'm a little rusty on that and uh, see what I come up with based on that. But to me, it seems a little lean. The only thing I noticed is this is the weakest cylinder on that side. And you can see there's a little bit more discoloration on the porcelain near the tip. 
as compared to say any of the other ones. So, and the driver side, they're all the same. So, I don't know. Something else to look into, that's for sure. Okay, as promised, we're going to test fuel pressure real quick. So that's key on, not cranked, got 52 pounds. And we're at 62 at idle, so 62, 63. I'm gonna say we're pretty healthy there have to do a load test later where I tape to the windshield and that will probably be tomorrow because it's about to rain actually it's sprinkling on me now as I tell you this so I will be back shortly uh, after we clean up out here to wrap things up and kind of give the overview so we're inside we're done for the day pretty much um, it's that time of year here in Florida. It rains every afternoon. It started to rain on me out there. It stopped, but you can see in the distance it's dark. It's about to come down. So we did the compression test. You've seen what number two did was odd. And then, you know, we've got these numbers. I'm going to have to look into that and see. I'm going to see what, like, uh, say a stock LQ4 has for crank and compression. And then, uh, See if there's some sort of a calculator I can do by the cam specs and uh, what the static compression is calculated. And we'll come up with that. But uh, clearly, we didn't find anything sinister. We didn't find any hole, dead holes with like 60 or less PSI. 150 was the lowest. It's not great, but being that the catch can hardly ever has any oil in it, I check it every thousand miles and a few little dribbles comes out. I don't think it's blow by. Um, it's got to be the valve job's not the greatest on it, which we already knew. I did the old razor blade rebuild on it, just hand lapped them in and called it good enough. And I have no clue how many miles were on them cylinder heads, and they were really dirty. I cleaned them up quick and slammed them together. Time was an issue with putting that together, so we did what we had to, and we got it back on the road. Um, so with all that said, I'm going to do some digging and some research on my end and kind of go from there, but uh, I need to put them 706 heads on soon and see if that bumps the crank and compression any and better valve seal, see if it makes better power. Who knows? But that'll do it for now. I appreciate you watching and uh, hanging in with me this long, and stay tuned. We've got more stuff planned for that truck and some of the other projects. Thanks again.